Making regalia is made possible in part by Hamilton Beach, makers of quality home and commercial appliances. And by Zcals, providers of custom decals, graphics, and t-shirts. And by generous contributions from viewers like you. We are back with another episode of Making Regalia with me, Joaquin Lone Lodge. Uh, we're going to finish up our fan stance aprons that we started on the last episode. Um, and I'm going to show you some tricks of the trade that I hold dear to me. Um, kind of some stuff I figured out making regalia. And, um, you know, these aprons that we're going to work on, uh, this is kind of a staple for the power world as far as uh, fan stance go. Uh, we have our top and our bottom aprons. And um, what I've done is I've done a little bit of applique work on there. And I'll show you how I've done it. And uh, from there, we're going to add the ribbon and go from there. So we've worked on these. These are just a little kid's outfit. But you know, all you need to do is just change up the measuring. Uh, and you can do this for any style, any, any size. So these can also be an adult. You just got to change up to like uh, the inches from here, there, uh, from the width and the height and stuff. So um, take whatever you know, like I've done in the past for the last episode and just kind of add to it. So we're going to get to it. Um, last episode, what we did, we uh, infused uh, both materials together. We used the white cotton on the bottom. And then we used our, our print on the top. Uh, like well, going back into it, uh, we used the white because it makes the uh, the base of it very vibrant. Um, it brings out all the colors in the um, the top color and all the other colors that the print actually has. It makes it pop. So that's why I like to use the uh, the white cotton um, to further infuse this. Um, I'm going to round this around with uh, bias tape. Uh, you can buy this at your most uh, most all like uh, fabric stores. Um, the bias tape actually holds uh, material together. It comes in uh, several different stellar, uh, different colors and also uh, different widths and sizes. Um, this one I'm just going to use a, a, um, a double fold, uh, fold it over, and uh, we should be good from there. Um, later on uh, during the show, I'm going to add all my ribbon to that bottom of the bias tape. So let's get started with this. I'm going to start with our bias tape. Like right now, you know, what we did before is we have a small little line of uh, uh, heap on tape holding it together to infuse it. Um, this allows it to, you know, hold in place um, so it doesn't move too much when I actually sew. So, and then the bias tape on top is just going to go around the edges all the way around the edge. So let me get started with that. Um, usually when I start this stitch on this, I'm not going to go with a zigzag. I'm just going to go with a straight in line. Um, it makes it a whole lot faster when I'm sewing so I can continue on doing other work. So, and also the other thing I want to do is I'm going to match up the color of my thread with my bias tape. So you don't actually see it and it's almost like invisible. So with this, it's a yellow. So I'm going to go with my yellow thread and I'm going to start winding up my machine real quick. We're just going to jump right into this. Let me load my machine. And later on down the other shows, we're going to get into different shows on how to load certain machines and stuff. Uh, me, I run a Janami, which is pretty easy and it's also self-loading. I really don't have to put my, like, dig down into there and actually look in a needle to actually load it. It actually uh, um, loads uh, itself. So if you ever are shopping around for like a sewing machine, kind of look for that. It would help you out a lot. I'm telling you, I, I had to change out threads all the time and it saves my eyes because I really don't have to look down inside the thread. I mean, inside the needle to actually load my thread. So all I'm doing now is I'm just wrapping the bias tape around the edge of uh, my material. And I'm going to do this and I'm going to try to hold this in place while I sew it down. And, you know, later on, you know, when you're sewing, you, you'll get used to actually holding it. The only problem is when you, when you start to do, like, rounded edges, you're going to have to pull the bias tape um, a little, like, give it a little bit of tension, and that way it'll wrap around your edges. Um, if you're having, like, uh, a straight end, like, uh, um, angle, um, sometimes it's good to actually uh, um, undo your needle and um, redo uh, your alignment when you actually uh, sew down. So let's get into this. So we finished up with our bias tape. Uh, you know, like what we did was just run, uh, run it all the way around the edges 
And what it does is, you know, it makes your pieces look um, uh, neater, you know, holds everything together and fuses your materials together if you're working with uh, um, several different types of material. Um, next, step, uh, uh, next step up was what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding my design work. Uh, this is, you know, done with, you know, other materials and, you know, like actually stacking them on top and making different designs. And like I said, you know, you can utilize any style of designs that you want. It could be, you know, your own preferable, uh, preferable designs. Um, something you come up with, something that's a family design, um, you know, it could be anything. Um, anything you want. Uh, this is kind of like your blank canvas. And this blank canvas that I'm working with, I, I always want to know like uh, my limitations as far as the height and the width and stuff like that. Um, the other part is the top of here. Um, since this is the bottom apron, usually what I like to do is I like to fold the top over and make a loop. And that way I can actually um, insert like a um, like shoestring and that way I can tie it on the side. Um, so what I'm doing, what I'm actually talking about is I like it. I like to fold this over and that way there's a little crease inside here to run my uh, shoestring through and you know that way when I get ready I can tie it on the side. It's always good to tie these things tight when you're dancing because you don't want these aprons to fall off because you kind of look goofy when you do. So what I'm going to do is just kind of fold this over, use my iron to actually hold the, like, hold the fold down, and I'm just kind of eyeball it. I'm going to say about maybe like two inches. And just kind of hold it down. I'm just going to iron a straight line right across over and over. And then from there, I'm just going to like tack one single like stitch line straight at the bottom. And that way, when you fold it back over, you know exactly the length that you can work with, you know all the material, you know that you can place on here and your limitations on here. So, from there, I'm just going to tack this down real quick. Okay, now we've got our little line here. You know, this way, you don't want to go past this line because if you ever sew on this, you know, all you're going to do is, you know, you're going to clog up your little, like, your little loop here so you won't be able to add um, any, like, shoestrings to. So, you know now that, you know, this little line is your limitation. That's as far as you can go with all your design work. Um, I've already started doing my design work and I kind of did it like last night, but I'll walk you through on how I actually got there. Um, using heat bond, um, what we do is, you know, the best way I like to do my design work is to sketch it out beforehand. Um, just get your piece of paper, kind of draw out some designs, um, and kind of custom fit it to whatever you want. Uh, this one, I wanted to do a border on both sides, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do is just a straight border here on both ends, and then I'm going to throw some little applique designs in there, and in the center, um, this family, they wanted an eagle. Um, I've, you know, I've done my own eagles before, and I kind of like to keep my templates and stuff. And so what we're going to do is just some applique work and then do an eagle in the center. This one, uh, I already pre-cut it and stuff. Uh, you know, this is just uh, going through and using heat bond like we've used in the past. Um, this allows it to give it a stiffness that I can uh, utilize and work with. And, you know, I've already cut this one out and actually got this one ready for you guys. It's a little off, but, you know, I can move it and then I can correct it. So I need to go a little bit lower with this. I'm just going to correct it real quick and round it. Okay, see, so like I said, you know, you don't want to go past your stitch mark because once you do that, you're going to clog up your little loop. So from there, it fits perfectly. And all I'm going to do is just pull the adhesive off. And now we're ready to actually like uh, heat bond this together. Now, working with sequins, uh, they don't actually take heat very well. Uh, you don't want to use your iron on her too long because what is going to happen is if you do it too long, uh, these, heat, these sequins are actually held on with uh, adhesives themselves. Um, with a really hot iron, you'll actually pull the sequins off. So what you want to do when you first iron on the sequin material is you want to run the iron really, um, uh, you don't want to keep the iron on there too long. Kind of real quick, you know, as long as it's just set on there, it, it should be good. And another cool trick is, um, this is the same piece of paper I just pulled off the back. Um, it fits perfectly on top. And so all I want to do is just run my iron, run it over it. Like I said, you don't want to keep your iron on it too long because it will actually pull the sequins off. And next thing you know, you got sequins all over your iron and 
When you go wake up in the morning and go to work, you'll have sequins on your shirt. So you just barely want to tack it on there because, like I said, when it gets too hot, it starts pulling these sequins off. And the cool part is, you know, like, you know, like uh, the sequins uh, material actually has an uh, adhesive on it itself too. So you can see it's on there pretty good. You know, I don't want to go any more than that. I just want to leave it just like that. And now what I'm going to do is just I'm going to um, tack this down around here with my zigzag. Preferably, I like to use very small like zigzag stitch. I try to make it almost invisible. Um, and also the thread that I'm going to use on this one, since it's a black sequin, I'm just going to go with a black stitch all the way up and down and all the way around. So let me jump on that. I'm going to just do a little small little zigzag to tack this down. I'm just going to do the whole border of this little black design real quick. Now we've tacked this down, you know, we've got one side all ready to go. I'm going to start going through my design work. Um, like I said, I've already sketched this out um, earlier last night. I've already gone through and kind of like played around with some designs. I'm going to show you how, you know, I kind of come up with some designs that um, I do. You know, this is pretty easy, just pretty easy like geometric designs on this one. So we finally got this tacked down. Um, I'm going to start layering this again. I'm going to start another design. Um, I want these to correlate on both sides, so I kind of got the measurements um, that I want on here. Um, I'm going to make this uniform so it's going to uh, look perfectly just like on the other side. Um, this is kind of like a geometric design I just kind of came up with. And like I said, you know, you can come up with any kind of sketches that you want. Uh, heat bond allows you to make any kind of designs and, you know, cut them out. And all you need to do is like this, you know, just uh, kind of heat bond it on. Um, cut your design out and then you can drop it onto another piece of material and just sew it in. Uh, you can continuously stack and stack, but remember if you're going to um, make a lot of different designs, don't, uh, don't use heat bond heavy, use heat bond light because it starts to gunk up the needle after a while. So all I'm going to do now is just pull, this, uh, pull the paper off and the adhesives that will oh, be on the bottom. From there, and I've already measured out the dead center where I need to be. It's going to be on this one, and you know, your measurements are going to be totally different. This is just for my, uh, this design here. So I'm going to utilize, you know, like uh, the piece of paper that I took off from the border. Just kind of drop it in there. And like I said, you really don't want to get this uh, material too hot because you'll start to pull off uh, the, uh, the sequence. And if you watch, I just barely went over with the iron with this uh, metallic gold. This metallic gold uh, takes to the adhesive really well too. Um, you don't have to really uh, iron it too hard. And if you do, uh, this, this is uh, kind of the material I've talked about in the past that will um, actually start to melt. And you don't want to do that too much. So barely want to do these ones. This is kind of a gentle material. From this, you know, since it's gold, uh, I don't actually have a gold thread. Um, I'm just going to go with the easy white just to actually uh, make it invisible. So let me tack this down real quick. And here we go. So now we finish up the, uh, this design, this gold metallic design. Um, I just want to emphasize, you know, like uh, when we actually do stitch this in, um, I like to keep on the very outside and just kind of infuse the materials together. Um, I used the white on this gold, and if you look at it, you really can't really see it that well, and that's what I want. You know, I, I want it to be almost invisible, like, you know, the two materials are just formed that way. And so that's kind of how I did it, and that's all I just want to say is just, you know, you always just want to ru run to the very edges of the materials and just kind of make them infuse together. Now along, um, I came up with another design that what I'm going to do is I'm going to, this one's a little bit more trickier, and, you know, don't worry about it, you know, your design work will come out. This one, um, if you look, I kind of did a little stacking 
you know, here, here, here. And uh, I kind of did some uh, color combinations where it's kind of going from lightest to darkest uh, with another geometric design. This is kind of a cool trick, you know, it's kind of eye-catching and it's a little bit more kind of crazier in the geometrics and stuff. So, um, but all I got now is, all I got to do now is heat bond this together and we should be good. I'm going to do one up here and then I'm going to do another one adjacent um, coming the other way and that way it looks like it's coming together. This way I'm just going to heat bond it together and tack this down. You want a good seed on here because, uh, you know, working with stacked materials, it's hard to get a good iron seed. And looks like we're about there. Because, you know, that's the hardest thing is when you start to sew and then the material starts to pop up and you have to undo your sewing machine and come back up on it. So there, I'm going to place this one. I just want these to intersect just like so. So now I'm just going to heap on these together. And the same time, you know, I'm going to go ahead and heat bond these together and I'm going to run my stitch from one top to the bottom, just kind of crisscrossing. And really kind of want to get, you know, the very edges, you just want to iron them right here on the very edges. Like I said, you don't want to put the iron right here because if it gets too hot, you're going to start pulling these sequins off. And it looks like we got, got it. All right, let me tack this down. And we were back, and with the power of television um, and my super fast sewing machine, we just did all our design work within a couple of seconds. Um, I really recommend getting one of these machines because they're super fast. I'm just kidding. Actually, uh, I've done these designs earlier last night, and I tricked you. I actually did these, and I just all I had to do is tack these down. But uh, going through it, you know, all we got to do is just tack these down. Um, like I said, you know, going through the design work, it's just kind of stacking. You can place one material at the bottom and then kind of stack. So on top of that one, place another material, st uh, stack that, stack that. Um, and that's pretty much all it is. Next thing up, uh, the family wanted me to do an eagle. And um, going through, you know, do my uh, regalia and stuff, I started sketching out a couple of eagles and I made a couple of templates using uh, masking tape and, you know, like uh, thick pieces of material. That, um, that way I can always continuously use it. Um, the eagle I came up with is kind of my own version. You know, it's kind of, um, I don't know, I would say it's kind of um, more modern-like. And I came up with two pieces. Actually, I came up with four. I've got, you know, like a white tail and a white head just to show it's a, it's a, a bald eagle. Um, so I'm just going to place this right about dead center. I'm going to start pulling off the material, but I'm just kind of getting a feel for it. And, you know, without, you know, taking off the paper, you know, you can kind of move it around and kind of, you kind of uh, situate where you want it. So I'm kind of feeling it. Uh, it looks about good there. So we're just going to tack him on there. So I pre-did this already. So I'm not really cheating you. I'm just kind of going a little fast. But, you know, like in our back segments, you know, I kind of showed how we did our applique. And this is kind of one of the things I've done in the past. So I just want to align this. Since this is in two pieces, I can kind of spread the, uh, the wings out a little bit. I want to kind of get it even on both sides right about here to there. And I'm just eyeballing it. You know, you can use your measuring devices, you know, like what they call a ruler. But um, I'm just really just eyeballing this one. And the other thing, uh, um, what I'm going to do is, like I said, this material is, uh, doesn't really take heat that well. And I don't want to mess it up, and I don't want to gunk up my, uh, my iron. So I'm just going to take a piece of copy paper. And since I've already got everything layered and set where I want it to, I'm just going to take uh, the copy paper and run right over it. This way I don't damage the uh, material and I don't mess up my iron, or I don't get any adhesive on the iron. Because that's another thing is, you know, you'll get, start to get adhesive, and your iron will start to gunk up. Now if you see, um, this is perfectly level, everything is perfect, you know, the stitches, um, when I do my stitch, this material is not going to pop up. So now all I'm going to do is just go around here, outline it in black, and then from there I'm going to inlay the white and do the white, and then we're finished with this eagle. And bam, we're done. Okay, so we're finished with the black part of my eagle. Let me go ahead and cut this off. 
and cut back here. Some people do this at the very end, you know, I'm kind of a stickler, it bugs me, so I usually have to cut them off right, right at the beginning. Now all I'm going to do now is attach my tail and my, uh, the little head for my uh, eagle. And I'm just going to place it like so, just going to slowly tack it down, looks like I'm going to have to use my paper. And it's down. I'm going to put my head, screw my head on, so if bird knows how to fly right. And that looks about good. There. And voila, I made an eagle. Whoa. All right, so here we go. I'm going to actually have to tack the head down now. Using the same stitch, you know, I'm only using a zigzag, uh, very close. Um, I'm going to change my thread out to white because I don't want to go black because it would kind of make it look a little off. So I'm just going to like uh, kind of make this invisible using white thread. And now we come to the part where the eagle is tacked down. Uh, we've actually outlined it in black. Um, the head and the tail, we did white. So everything is um, kind of transitioned and you can't really see it. It's almost invisible. Um, this eagle, like I, I've told you, um, like I mentioned, um, I've made a template of it and I utilize this a lot and I totally forgot um, I actually did it on this shirt. So this same eagle that I have on the shirt I uh, actually did here too. Um, so it's always good to keep your templates. You can always utilize them again over and over and over. Um, next up, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to finish this up. I came up with a crazy little circle design using geometrics and stuff. So I'm just going to tack that down and you know, this is pretty easy. Um, kind of did the same thing with stacking and with my geometrics. And I'm just going to place this right dead center. I've already pulled off my adhesive, so it's ready to go. Um, but I think it's going to look really good just right here. And I'm kind of keeping with the same color uh, coordinations. So all I've got to do now is just heat bond this together, tack this down, and we're done for this outfit. Um, after that, we're just going to go ahead and start doing our ribbon. And this guy's ready to go here in a minute. two seconds on this one. Watch. So uh, what I did is, you know, like uh, just now finish up our circle design. This one's pretty easy because I've already done the applique first hand. Um, and all I had to do was just tack this down and um, pretty much this whole uh, apron and set is done. Um, you know, I've got all my designs from left to right, got my eagle in there, got my circle designs. Um, pretty much this one, uh, I feel like, you know, this one came out pretty good. Um, I also did the top the same way, so it uh, actually matches. On the back, I did the same correlating designs. And so I think uh, what all we need to do now is um, I'm going to attach the ribbon on the very outsides, and uh, this one's ready for contest after that. We're going to finish up here. I'm going to show you a really neat trick on how I cut my ribbon out. This will save you a lot of time. Um, a long time ago when I first started cutting out ribbon, I, I was cutting it out one at a time, one at a time. And with the different colors, I, I, what I did is I used to get a template you know, of how long I wanted my ribbon. And I'd pull out like all my you know, like, uh, bins of ribbon and I would cut that one and you know, actually merge them together. Um, I learned a new trick where I use a cardboard piece and I'm going to wrap it and then I'm going to cut it at the bottom and it's going to knock all your ribbon out in one uh, single swoop. So let's get started on that. There are many cutting tools to choose from, but a simple pair of shears is the best way to go. Shears are different from scissors in that they have different sized handles instead of same sized handles, offering better leverage when in use. These asymmetrical handles are also bent upwards, so fabric stays flat on the table during cutting. You may want to invest in two pairs, one for fabric and one for paper. Paper cutting dulls shears, making it difficult to cut fabric, which needs sharper blades to get a smooth, clean cut. Okay, we're back, and like I said, we're going to start off with this uh, piece of cardboard. Um, this is pretty good, you know, all you got to do is measure it out and, you know, to the length of material you want. The cool part is, you know, if you look, all I'm going to do is, um, once I start cutting, this is going to be the same length as here to the here. 
Now you can cut this, you know, whatever you want. You can go from like uh, make it longer, or you know, if you need to make it super long, you can actually uh, wind it this way. Um, this way, you know, you can uh, wind it and cut the bottom, and you're going to have all your ribbon work right here. Um, this is my favorite piece of carbon. I used this before. Um, all I'm going to do is wind this up right here. So um, all you got to do is take your ribbon and just wind it. I've used this cardboard many, many times. So there, there. This will cut all your ribbon really easily. Now you want to get them all straight and sometimes it is hard to work with. But this allows you to cut a lot of pieces of ribbon all together. So once you've got it, you know, once you start at the bottom right here, all you got to do now is take your scissors and cut. And from there, you got all your ribbon just perfectly ready to go um, from uh, to sew on. All you got to do here is just bend this right at the very ends and tack it down. So we're going to do this over and over and over with all the different colors and stuff. Um, you know, depending on how many colors you're going to go with, you know, like you can use your cardboard over and over. But that way you can also like, uh, from here you can kind of color coordinate where you want your ribbon, um, how you want it to flow, and go from there. So once again, uh, we're wrapping up our, our segment on making fancy dance aprons. Uh, you know, I want to thank everyone out there for writing me. Uh, you can also, you know, if you want to inbox me, you can always uh, send a message at LoneLodgeCATV7 uh, at Yahoo.com. And if you want to catch up on any past episodes that we have, you can always go to CATV47.com, uh, check out Making Regalia, and that's where we're going to hold all our videos for, like, uh, for our shows. Um, Thanks again for everyone tuning in. Uh, I think next segment we're going to have, we're going to do a grass dance outfit. So uh, tune in for that. Aho, people.